In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the uh, hypergeometric probability distribution. And the hypergeometric probability distribution is used to model situations that have sampling without replacement. Now, usually there's two possibilities, although there can be uh, there can be more, and we'll take a look at that in one of the later examples. And we call these outcomes either a success or a failure. Now, the sampling without replacement is what makes this discrete probability distribution different than a binomial. In a binomial, as you go from trial to trial to trial, the probability of a success or a failure stays the same for every single one. Now, to further explain that, let's say that you have a container that has four red chips and six black chips, and you're, you're sampling randomly, so you're not looking to see if you're picking a red one or a black one. And uh, so let's say you select three of them without replacement. Now, it could be reaching in the container and picking out three without looking. And then once you've got them out, noticing whether they're red or black. It could also mean reaching in, taking one out, noticing its color, but not putting it back. That's the without replacement part. And then reaching in to take a second one, noticing its color, but not putting it back. And then do the same for a third. Now, we could call getting a red chip a success and a black one a failure, uh, or either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, the probability of getting a red chip or a black chip changes with each draw. So for example, the tree diagram would look something like this, and we're not going to go through all the probabilities, just enough to uh, explain how they change from trial to trial. So there's, um, there's 10 chips all together, uh, 4 are red, 6 are black. So the probability of getting a red chip on the first draw would be 4 out of 10, because 4 of them are red and there's 10 all together. And so the probability of getting a black is 6 out of 10. And we can reduce both of those. Dividing by 2, we get this is 2 fifths and this is 3 fifths. You should always write the probabilities in the lowest terms. Now, so this point here represents in the tree diagram the <laughs> event that you got a red on the first draw. So what's the probability of getting another red? Well, at this point, there's only nine chips left because we've taken one out, and the one we've taken out is the red one. So there's only three of the chips left out of the nine are red. So the chance of getting another red one would be three out of nine. The chance of getting a black one at that point would be six out of nine because if we've taken a red one out, there's still nine left, and all 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 six of the original black ones are there. So six out of nine would be the chance of getting a black on the second draw after getting a red in the first one. And we can reduce each of these, dividing by three. This is a third. That's two thirds. Again, write your probabilities in lowest terms. And one more probability. Let's say you got a red in the first and a red in the second. What's the chance of getting another red? Well, at this point, there's eight chips left because we've taken one, two out, and the two that we've taken out are both red. So there's uh, two of the chips left are red out of eight. So the chance of getting another red in a row would be two out of eight, or that reduces to a quarter, or one-fourth. So notice how the probability of getting a red changes each time. And the same is true for the blacks. They didn't focus on the blacks over here, but it would alter as well. So for example, the probability of getting a black on the first draw is 3 out of 5. But if you got a red in the first one, the probability of getting a black on the second draw is now 2 thirds. So the probabilities, because of the without replacement part, change as you go from trial to trial. On the second page here, this is the... Uh, uh, probability formula that's used for the hypergeometric probability distribution. Um, what uh, capital X represents here is a random variable that assigns or it gets assigned different values depending upon chance. This is all randomly done, so the chance of getting uh, two red chips, three red chips, or whatever it might be, uh, changes because of the chance involved. The little x represents the actual amount that you're looking for, like what's the probability of getting three red chips? Okay, out of four. Now, these are all combinations, so what A represents is the number of objects that are deemed a success, like the, getting the red chips, for example. Uh, the uh, N here is the total number of objects, or the population size, like how many chips are in the container altogether. And what R represents is the number of trials, so that's what the R represents in this bottom combination. Now, there's more than one way to write combinations, so that's another way to write it. Uh, this means A choose X, or a combination of A objects selected X at a time. 
Uh, this one here is a combination of n minus a objects selected r minus x at a time. And the bottom, which is actually the sample size, is the combination the entire sample size choose r. Um, so that's how many objects and r is the number of trials we're taking. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, number one here, a hat contains five green marbles and nine blue marbles. Uh, and four marbles are drawn randomly and without replacement. So calculate each probability. So the without replacement is why we would use the hypergeometric. If we were using replacement, um, if we put the marble back every time we took it out and noted its color, then you could use the binomial probability distribution. So we're asked to calculate each probability. One's here, there's another one on the next page, next slide. Uh, so the problem of getting three green marbles. So to use the hypergeometric, identify the values for A, N, and R first. So A would be five. So if we're interested in the number of green marbles we get, there are five green marbles. That's why A would be five. N would be 14 because there's five green and nine blue. So there's 14 altogether. And uh, the R is number of trials. So we're selecting four out, so that's why R would be 4. So here's the formula. So let's substitute uh, 5, 14, and R in place of A, N, and R. So this would be 5, choose X here. Uh, N minus A, so 14 minus 5 is 9. Uh, R minus X, R is 4, so that's why this would be 4 minus X here. And then N choose R would be 14 choose 4 in the denominator. Now this is a good thing to write out when you're um, calculating more than one probability. So uh, in the second example uh, we're going to need this probability function again so that's why I wanted to write that out. Now we're asked in this one to find the probability of getting three green marbles. So little x would be 3. So we would put 3 here, 4 minus 3 would be 1, and so that's the, that's the calculation to calculate the probability of three, uh, three green marbles. So uh, here's an image from my graph and calculator. Five choose three is 10. Uh, nine choose one is nine. 14 choose four is 1,001. So, so that's why this is 10, this is nine, and the 14 choose four is 1,001 in the denominator. So 10 times 9 is 90, so you're dividing 90 by 1,001, so the probability is 0 0.0899. Uh, this is what the calculations look like if you don't have a combination key on your calculator. So 5 choose 3 would be 5 factorial divided by, and remember in the denominator there's two factorials, the 3, the second number, and then 5 minus 3 is 2, so there's also a 2 factorial. So for the 9 choose 1, for example, it's 9 factorial in the numerator, and then 9 minus 1 is 8, so 8 factorial, and also 1 factorial gets divided into the 9 factorial to give you 9. And uh, the 14 choose uh, 4 would be 14 factorial divided by 10 factorial times 4 factorial. Uh, B asks to calculate the probability of getting fewer than two green marbles. So again, that's the value of a, n, and r from the previous page. And so here's the probability function from the previous page with uh, 5, 14, and 4 put in place of a, n, and r. Now, the probability that the random variable is less than 2. Less than 2 would mean 1 or 0. Okay, so that's what less than 2 means. Okay, it's the probability of getting no green marbles whatsoever or and 1. Okay, so we want to add those two probabilities together. So that's why it's, it's handy to have this uh, formula written out. So the probability the random variable has a variable value of 0, which means we did not get any green marbles whatsoever. So x would be 0 here. 4 minus 0 would be 4. And so that's probably a 0. To do the 1, we put 1 in place of x. So 5 choose 1. 4 minus 1 would be 3. So that's 9 choose 3 in the end. So, um, and I'll, I'll go over the calculation of all the combinations in a moment. So 5 choose 0 is 1, 9 choose 4 is 126, 14 choose 4 is 1,001 from the previous page, uh, 5 choose 1 is 5, 9 choose 3 is 84, and again 1,001 into the denominator. So if you multiply 5 by 84, uh, that gives you 420, 
and if you add 126 to it, you get 546. So to, if you want to write your answer as a fraction, it would be 546 over 1,001. And if you divide that out, you get 0.54 repeating. So this is the uh, all the calculations uh, to uh, find that 5 choose 0 and 9 choose 4 and 14 choose 4, etc. Actually, 14 choose 4 is from the previous page. So we don't need to do that again. And uh, so that's where the 0.54 repeating comes in. So, you know, 0.545, you want around three decimal places, that would be the probability. So a little over 50% uh, chance of getting fewer than two green marbles. Uh, example two, uh, now we have a deck of cards, and a normal deck of cards, playing cards, has 13 clubs, 13 diamonds, 13 spades, and 13 hearts. You're asked to calculate the probability of getting three hearts when five are dealt. I wanted to do this example because there's actually four different kinds of objects here, okay? But you can still use a hypergeometric because we're concerned with getting a hearts, three hearts, that is. So we would call getting a heart a success and anything else a failure, or not a success at least. So there's really only, even though there's four different uh, uh, suits here, um, there's only two different possibilities. We either get a heart or we don't. So N would be 52 because there's 52 cards in a normal playing deck of cards. A would be 13. That's the 13 hearts. Okay, so the 13 hearts here. R would be 5 because we're dealing 5 cards at a time. So this is the formula. So if we substitute 15, sorry, 52, 13, and 5 in. So this would be 13 choose. Now we're looking for the probability of getting uh, 3 of them. So that's why this would be 13 choose 3. Uh, N minus A would be 52 minus 13. And then R minus X would be 5 minus 3 here. Over, and the N choose R would be 52 choose 5 in the denominator. And if you simplify, 52 minus 13 is 39. 5 minus 3 is 2. Now, actually, before we get into calculate this, and I didn't mention this in the, in the last examples, but I will here, what these three different combinations represent, this is the size of what's called the sample space. There are 52 choose 5 possible five card hands. Okay, so that's like all the possibilities. No restrictions whatsoever dealing five cards from a deck of 52. What these two combinations in the top represent are the number of ways you can get th three hearts and then the other two cards as non-hearts. You see, three of the 13 hearts that's why this is 13 choose 3. It's choosing three hearts from the 13 available. Times, there are 39 non-hearts. The non-hearts are the 13 clubs, 13 diamonds, and 13 spades. So those three 13s add to 39. And we're if, if we're dealing five cards and we want to know that probably the three are hearts, well then two have to not be hearts. So that's what those two combinations in the top represent. The probability of what you want to have happen times the probability of what's left basically. And so that's the probability that you get three hearts in a five card hand. And so here's all the combinations. Uh, 13 choose 3 is 286. This is 286. That's the calculation with uh, factorials. 39 choose 2 is 741. And 52 choose 5. There's actually 2 million, almost 600,000 possible five card hands. And so we fill those in, uh, multiply 286 by 741, that's this uh, 211, 926, and divided by the 2598960, and we get 0 0.0815. So you have a little over an 8% chance of getting three hearts when dealt a five card hand. So that's the probability, and there's my answer statement. Uh, last page, the expected value of a hypergeometric random variable is uh, R times A over N. So, fairly simple little formula. So, in the previous example about the cards, uh, N was 52, uh, A was 13 hearts, and the sample size was 5. We're selecting 5 cards at a time. Calculate the most likely number of hearts dealt. So, using the uh, expected value formula, R is... 5, uh, A is 13, so 5 times 13 here, divided by N is 52. And so if you divide that, you get 1.25. So now, you can't get 1.25 hearts. 
So this is an average over time. If you're to deal lots and lots of five card hands, then you should expect on average to get a little more often uh, one. Uh, it's a little bit above one. So on average, you can get a little bit more than one. You can either get one or two or three or four or five. But uh, you should, uh, on average, to expect to get one or a little bit better than that. So uh, that's what that expected value means. So that's the most likely number of hearts dealt in a five-card hand. And again, it's an average. You can't get 1.25 hearts. But if you were to do this experiment lots and lots of times, it would average out to about 1.25 hearts per hand. And that's the end of the tutorial.